After losing his titles and undefeated status, many fighters thought Tyson would become an easy opponent to beat. But Iron Mike only proved that he could grow stronger, becoming even more lethal. Welcome! In today's video, you'll witness an authentic massacre permitted within the limits of a boxing ring, but even at the end of the bout, you'll be left speechless at the war that unfolded. Watch with discretion as the images you're about to see are highly sensitive. It was the year 1991 amid rumors that the golden years of the indestructible Mike Tyson had come to an end. What an uppercut by Douglas and down goes Tyson! Even so, many challengers added their names to the waiting list for the chance to step into the ring with Iron Mike and claim a victory that would position them as one of the best in the sport. On March 18th, it was Donovan Ruddick's turn. Ruddick had made his debut almost 10 years earlier, on March 20th, 1982, defeating Wes Rowe at the Columbus Center, Toronto, by technical knockout in the fourth round of a six-round fight. From then on, he began a modest winning streak until April 30th, 1985, when David Jaco in the Dartmouth Sportsplex ring in Dartmouth handed him the bitter taste of defeat. What could have been his end was just the beginning of a new era. As if touched by the Elder Wand, Ruddick began a new winning streak over the years, positioning him at the right moment and place to face the man who, in turn, was breaking records left and right, Iron Mike. Both fighters earned their place in the ring of the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada for a heavyweight eliminator fight. Tyson entered the fight as the number one heavyweight contender for the World Boxing Council, the World Boxing Association, and the International Boxing Federation. However, Ruddick was close behind him. The World Boxing Council, the World Boxing Association, and the International Boxing Federation all ranked Ruddick as the number two heavyweight contender. With a fight labeled between the two best for the title, only a catastrophic and explosive ending could be expected. That's why, from the moment it was announced, the fight was promoted with the phrase, the winner by knockout, as a prediction of what awaited the loser of this match. At 27 years old, the Canadian giant entered with a professional record of 25 victories, with 18 of them by knockout, one loss, and one draw. In the opposite corner, Iron Mike awaited him. At only 24 years old, with a slightly later debut, Tyson boasted an imposing professional record of 39 victories, 35 by knockout, and just one prior defeat. Undoubtedly, the scales tipped in Mike's favor. However, it was one of those nights where anything could happen. The judges for the fight were Jerry Roth, Chuck Giampa, and Dave Moretti. With Richard Steele as the third man in the ring, the action began. Round 1 With the sound of the bell, the fighters met in the center of the ring. Immediately, Iron Mike was as aggressive as he's remembered to be back then. Charging Ruddick against the ropes, the clash of force generated the first clinch of the fight. Soon after, the intensity of Iron Mike's offense caused the Canadian giant to stumble, almost falling toward the center of the ring. The round progressed, and the fighters exchanged power punches. Ruddick seemed to rely on clinching when Mike got too close. Even from these early moments, it was clear that Tyson had become the aggressor in the fight. It's done something. It's stopped Iron Mike. Oh, what a right hand by your steel and associate minister. Let's let know. Doesn't seem to care. A harsh body punch by Tyson. That Round two. Tyson came out of his corner determined to tame the Canadian giant, and within seconds, he did. A formidable left hook sent Ruddick straight to the canvas, and the crowd went wild. Ruddick got up immediately with a facial expression that showed he was frustrated by what had just happened. Walking around the ring, he listened to Steele's mandatory eight count. When the fight resumed, Ruddick relied on clinching to buy some time. But with Mike going for his head, it was inevitable that brief exchanges of punches would occur. Round 3. Ruddick left his corner intending to keep Tyson at bay. He extended his left hand, but no force was strong enough to stop Mike's aggressive offense. Even in the clinches initiated by Ruddick, Mike attacked the body. He had already defeated a couple of giants in his career and knew that was the correct way to weaken them before pushing them to their breaking point. Take advantage. I've forgotten how to tie up Tyson. As long as Tyson gets in, he lets him go and lets him work on the inside. 
When Ruddick entered the exchange of punches, he opened his guard and lost more than he gained. With less than 10 seconds left in the round while exchanging punches in the center of the ring, he received a tenacious left hook that sent him to the canvas for the second time. This time, it took him a second longer to get up, and the expression on his face was a poem. Full of astonishment and disbelief, Ruddick listened to Steele once again give him the standing count. He was on his feet at the count of seven, proving he was still competent to fight. Luckily, the bell gave him a few extra seconds to recover in his corner. Round four. Tyson came out of his corner like a caged beast, but Ruddick, knowing the result of such an attitude, stopped him with a clinch. Extending his left hand, Ruddick really wanted to keep Tyson at a distance, but there was a big difference between wanting and being able. And every time Tyson closed the gap, he could push him against the ropes with increasing ease. No longer initiating exchanges, Ruddick spent the entire round on the defensive. He covered up, bought time with clinches, and retreated, attempting to escape Mike. The Canadian giant seemed to be entering survival mode. Round 5. Without hiding it, Ruddick began to retreat every time Mike took a step forward. He seemed to throw only one or two punches to reaffirm his stance in the fight. However, his interest in engaging in close exchanges still did not accompany him into the ring. Mike's aggressive offense was frustrated by the clinches initiated by the Canadian giant. Still, Tyson landed a couple of good punches during the round. When it ended, Ruddick could be seen leaning on the ropes and sighing before sitting down in his corner. What remained of his fighting spirit was on the verge of being banished from his already wounded body. Shot by Ruddick. Tyson's promoter Don King. You question his integrity or his honesty. A flurry in the He's looking for that uppercut. He's looking for that one thing that. We are now closing down the fifth round. Round six. Mike pushed Ruddick against the ropes as soon as the sixth round began. Ruddick tried to keep him at bay, extending his left hand but it wasn't strong enough. Tyson's signature hooks began to appear in the ring, and it felt like the Canadian giant was fighting against a countdown. During the final minute, real action finally broke out with a violent exchange of punches that kept the audience shouting, even during the break. Still, no one could have anticipated what was just around the corner. A product who continues to stay on his feet. Round seven. Once again, the fighters met in the center of the ring with Tyson as the aggressor. Ruddick relied on clinching while Mike bombarded his body. Mike's patience was wearing thin, and his combinations were becoming longer. Halfway through the round, Ruddick was pushed against the ropes. Cornered, he was spared from being battered by Steele, who put distance between them. Even so, Mike unleashed a flurry of punches that made Ruddick's head go from side to side, followed by his body, until he hit the ropes. Steele, seeing how the Canadian giant had become a mere puppet, had no choice but to intervene out of mercy and call the fight to an end. Moves on here, the seventh round coming up here for withstanding this kind of barrage. Oh, but that wavered him. Just then, Tyson has Ruddick on the ropes. If Tyson applies the pressure... After the fight, the fighters shared a hug, willing to leave the rivalry behind when the ring attendants began their own battle. Dozens of men from both sides stormed the ring, disputing their own fight while the fighters were safely held in their corners. When the chaos subsided, there was nothing left to fight over. Mike Tyson had defeated Donovan Ruddick by technical knockout at 2 minutes and 22 seconds of the seventh round. If you've made it this far, thank you. Remember, there's no better way to support my content than by leaving a like on the video. If Ruddick had taken a more aggressive stance, do you think he would have had a real chance of beating Tyson? I'll read your thoughts in the comments.